Hey, it's Thomas Mulready from CoolCleveland.com, and we're here today at the Cleveland Institute of Music, and we're here today with Keith Fish, who heads up the composition department here. Thanks for meeting with us, Keith. Sure. Hey, you are head of composition, so all your students are learning how to compose music, right? right? right. What is the state of, of music these days, classical music? Well, I think we're in a really interesting time. I mean, for my students, I think it's a tremendously interesting time to be a composer because they can draw on so many different types of music now that weren't available to composers, even in my generation, because of the web, because of the internet, because of YouTube, Instant Encore, all these various uh, social media and such. They can be connected to composers all over the world immediately, which it took my, even composers of my generation, we might not know what was going on in hung Hungary right now, or in Paris, or on the West Coast, or in Canada, or in Mexico, and my kids just know immediately what's going on in all these places and they can draw on that, combine it with their own interest, their interest in film, their interest in video, their interest in what we used to call world music, whatever that means now. Sure. And they can combine all of that to create their own sound world, which is just a remarkable There's opportunity. There's so many opportunities, yeah. right? And you guys are doing a cool project here, uh, April 3rd and April 6th. Right. April 3rd, right here behind us here at, at Mixon mm -hmm. Hall, and then April 6th you move over to MoCA. Right. It's your new music ensemble, the sure. new music series. Mm -hmm. And uh, the one at MoCA is actually pretty cool because people get a little tour of the galleries. Right. And they're doing some of your work. You've got violinist uh, Lena Bon also right. there. Mm -hmm. Talk about what they're going to, what kind of pieces they're doing. They're doing sure. some of your work here, aren't they? Right, right. So this, th this concert is our spring new music ensemble concert, April right. 3rd at 4 o'clock in Mixon. We repeat most of the program at MoCA, 6.30 Wednesday night, April 6th. And the MOCA series is a really exciting series because it's, we started it two years ago. They came to us and they wanted to incorporate new music performance, contemporary music within the contemporary galleries. And what better way than to bring the new music ensemble over, give our students another opportunity to present the program, right. try to come up with programs that link up with some of the work at the museum. Uh, this particular program, as you said, my dear friend Lena Bond, who I've known for 20 years or so, is coming. Wow. Uh, we went to graduate school together. She's a fantastic fiddle player. Uh, she's going to be guest artist for this program. So we're doing a piece by John Cage, an old piece called Credo and Us from the early 40s right. <laughs> for piano and tin cans and radio and phonograph <laughs> and electric buzzers great. and all sorts of stuff. It's great. It's a really fun piece. And then Lena is going to play three solo pieces uh, by David Felder, who teaches at uh, SUNY Buffalo, who grew up in Cleveland, oh. by Jeffrey Mumford, who uh, teaches at Lorain County Community College and lives down in Oberlin, and a new piece of mine that I wrote for Lena for this program. Wow, a lot of Cleveland connections. A lot of Cleveland connections. And then we're ending with Luciano Berrio's folk songs. Wow. Which is 11 folk songs that he found and arranged for a mezzo-soprano ensemble. So talk about this, because new music, obviously, mm -hmm. um, is, is contemporary music, but it's, 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 it's not Beethoven or Haydn. Uh, you know, it's, it's music being written now. But, it, but it's gone through a kind of a rough patch because of atonal music and 12-step and, and Schoenberg and the second Viennese school, and it, it kind of turned people off for a while. But, but I think people might have the wrong opinion of what it is because it's actually just music that's out there being written currently, well, correct? Yeah, I mean, we sort of toss around new music as this sort of umbrella term. And, right. I mean, for me, Beethoven is still new. But, you know, <laughs> right. most people wouldn't say that Beethoven is new music. But I think what he does musically is still relevant and still absolutely cutting edge sure. like, with the decisions he makes. But really, for our purposes, my ensemble tends to focus on music since about 1980 or so. Ah. Although we'll step back and do like this Cage piece from the early 40s because it's a great piece. It's yes. a great opener. Yeah. Um, for me, I think there are, there are pieces being written today which I would call old, and there are old composers that I would call new. Right. It's really just right. about, I think, the aesthetic, the judgment, um, the decisions the composer makes. Yes. What are their concerns? Are they... How, how are they connected to their time? Are they expressing something right. of their time now? I mean, sort of like we said, Beethoven is timeless, but then so is Stravinsky. Right, you know, a right. piece like The Rite of Spring or L'Histoire de Soldat is always going to be new. Right. You know, Beethoven Eroic is always going to be new. Um, but as I said, we focus primarily on works of about the last 30 years, give sure. or take. Talk uh, about, with, with, with new music, uh, one of the things is, is melody and, mm -hmm. and the tune. Right. Is that still relevant these oh, days? Absolutely. Is, the, is that as important as it always Ab was? Absolutely. Um, there are just different types of tunes. Right. You know? I mean, I would challenge most people to hum a tune in a Mahler symphony. But we know there are melodies there, right? Sure, there are. You know? um, but melody can mean a lot of different things. I mean, for me, melody is one way you get from A to B in a piece. And 
just because the melodies may not be in the same form or the same shape as a Schubert melody, for example, doesn't mean that melody doesn't exist. I mean, melody is the expressive core of a piece, and right. all these pieces have expressive cores that they're trying to communicate. Now, your students are, are actually working a lot with some other artists in right. other realms, mm -hmm. in the visual arts realm, in the film and video, theater, because right. they're scoring music that's going to be used in, in bigger productions. Sure. Talk about the opportunities that they have these days with technology to work and collaborate with other artists. Well, one thing that my colleague Stephen Cohn and I are really focused on here at CIM, and I think this is a um, sort of one of the core principles and aesthetics of being at CIM is this idea of collaboration and going out in the community, engaging the community. Our students are working with filmmakers from CIA, student filmmakers, from video game designers from CASE, from, with choreographers, with uh, um, uh, playhouses, with the Shakespeare Festival in the summer, writing music for Anthony and Cleopatra. Right. We've got a project coming up with the Planetarium at the Natural History Museum next year where my students will be collaborating with student filmmakers from CIA to create these new pieces to be shown in the planetarium when it reopens. At the Museum of Natural History. Museum, yeah, <laughs> and that's going to happen about a year from now. Sure. So we're just starting that process oh, now. That sounds but awesome. It's really important for them to get out, to get outside themselves, to yes. get outside the building, to get outside their own comfort zone. Exactly. And the way the world is working, it's a really interesting time, as I was saying earlier, because I think that on one hand we're so much more connected because of technology, social media, sure. all this, but at the same time we're more fragmented in a sense because it's very easy to sort of be in your own little space right. and just use technology. And it's very important, I think, for them to get out and learn how other artists think. Exactly. Because you can take some of those lessons of how a painter thinks or how a, a filmmaker thinks and incorporate them into your own work. Right. I mean, we hear this in music at the, like a lot of Stravinsky's music. When the, the quick cuts and such he makes in his music and the quick changes yeah. might not happen if it were not for early film and James Joyce and the way that Joyce cut up text and such. And, and the fact that he was writing for theater as well. And he was writing well. for theater and writing for film as well right. and all sorts of things. Right. So. so you've got some interesting students doing some cool stuff. Joshua right. Rodriguez, uh, award-winning film that he's done with a CIA student. Mm -hmm. um, Louis Chiapetta. Ch right. Uh, ASCAP Young Composer Award, and Matt Smith also won a Composition Fellow. Right. He's the Composition Fellow down at the Canton Symphony. Right. So your, your students really have an opportunity to, to get out and apply for awards and, and, right. and, and really make great, achievements. They're doing great things. I'm really proud of them. I mean, you just mentioned a few. There's so many of them that are doing wonderful things. Um, Louis Chiapetta, who you just mentioned, just won a major award from the American Academy of Arts and Letters, which is a really big coup. Really? And I don't think it's ever happened to a CIM student. Wow. Um, Matt Smith, as you mentioned, his, he's a composed, composition fellow with Canton Symphony, but also his piece is going to be played at Severance by the, the Cleveland Orchestra Youth Orchestra. He won their competition. Um, you mentioned Josh, who's working with a lot of filmmakers. Um, Mike, they're doing really wonderful, wonderful things. This is so. amazing. Talk about the students that come here from around the, the country and around mm -hmm. the world to CIM. W what do they like about this place? What do they get out of coming to school here and, and, and living for four or more years in this environment? Right. Well, they learn how to deal with snow. <laughs> um, if they're not from the, you know, the Midwest or the Northeast. That's uh, a bonus. That's a bonus, right, right. They, they're wardrobes. They get to um, you know, expand their closets with lots of clothes for the winter. Um, so actually, what I think is special about this place, and I've, I've taught at several different schools, but there's something really unique about CIM in that obviously we know these kids are very talented and we have a fantastic faculty and an amazing administration that supports what we do. And we, hold, we all hold ourselves and our students to very, very high standards. And yet at the same time, it's a really supportive, warm environment to be a student, I think. You know, um, I've always, I always say you, you, you're not supposed to have a dysfunctional relationship with your education. You know, and there are some <laughs> schools where people go for four years that may be great schools, but they come out and they're not really happy they were there. Yeah. You know, and this place, people come and, yes, we hold them to very, very high standards and demand a lot. But at the same time, you have a lot of people paying attention to you. You have a lot of people looking out for you. I think it's a very safe place for parents yeah, to send yeah. their, their kids, especially the undergraduates. They're going, coming, you know, they may be coming from California or sure. somewhere, and mom and dad aren't sure, wow, they're going to be thousands of miles away. Are they, sure. Can we trust the place to take care of them? Yeah. And, and I think it's because, in a lot of ways, the core of CIM is about chamber music. 
Mm. And wh however, we do, whether it's chamber music with the Cavani Quartet and Peter Saloff, whether it's mm -hmm. chamber music in the wind department, the brass department, percussion department, or just what my students are doing in writing chamber music, new chamber music, but the idea of chamber music, of the great musical democracy being chamber music, Interesting. Of, being, of the idea of constant collaboration, right. I think it's a really, really special place. You know? Well, Keith, you've got some great facilities here. This mm -hmm. mixing hall is, is oh, the finest fabulous. recital yeah. hall in the country, is what Fantastic. we're calling it, until yeah. someone argues with right. us and tells us <laughs> different. And you're going to be here in just right. a few days. Enjoy this concert. Enjoy your time over at MoCA, and, and congratulations on all your success. We'll Thanks stay in again, touch. Tom. Thanks. Thank you. Hey, it's Thomas Mulready from CoolCleveland.com. Have a great week in Cool Cleveland.